Right, so this is Skeggy's house, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is where Skeggy lives. All oh, right, okay. Uh, it's a bit of a bloody climb, isn't it? Right? It is. It's, uh, I'm finding knackering coming up the hill there. Yeah. Well, I should imagine winter time would be pretty. Um, well, you can hear and a lot of uh, obstacles. Yeah. So you're not going to tell me he lives in there for Christ's sake. No, that's really good with it. Right, my name's Chris Jones. Um, it was always my intention, I'm an ex-serving soldier with the Royal Regiment of Wales. It was always my intention to get involved um, with helping some of the lads who have fallen by the wayside and uh, for those in need of a hand. As we're getting older, we all start to creak a bit. And um, anyway, recently uh, something came to light where one of the soldiers is hit on a bit of hard times. It's been mentioned all over Facebook and we'll talk about that very briefly shortly but anyway i was invited up here today to have a little look around um give some sort of opinions i don't know what to expect when we go and visit uh, our comrade inside but um who knows we'll have a little look and we'll do some filming and see what uh, what it's all about and where we're going to go with it this is will so will obviously it was yourself first of all you sort of initiated things via a, a, a certain network and from there we, we arrive at the point we are today. Do you want to just Well basically what it was, I, I was asked to come down and have a, a look at Skeggy because I got told of uh, he was in trouble um, and through our charity uh, we got a ration pack and we brought up food uh, for Skeggy to make sure that he had enough food uh, and when we seen the state of the living conditions I thought I was moving back into the 19th century, so that, that's why I invited Martin to come up, just as proof that the conditions he's living in, if he'd been <coughs> a dog, the RSPCA would have moved him out straight away. So we are here now to uh, address Skeggy and find out what's happening. Um, I phoned up last night and arranged to meet him, that we were coming over, so he is expecting us. So what we'll do now, we'll knock the door and see if Skeggy's there, okay? Oh, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Hello, Skeg. All right, Mugger. Yeah. Do you remember me? <laughs> remember the phone up last night that said Martin was coming over? How are you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah. so. You mind if we come in? Oh, are you expecting a, a date for tonight, Coley? No, I'm going to take this everywhere. All right, okay. So, we're coming in, we're going to have, have a cut there or what? Good to see you. I haven't changed much. No. Bit creaky. After you will. Right. Yep, we've come about your unpaid parking fine. Alright, thanks. Uh, uh, <laughs> from 1975, mate. Uh, no problem. Hold the shot. There's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you okay. How are you doing? I didn't go back for 10 years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They'll always catch you in the end. Anyway, Skeg, it's uh, good to see you, mate. So, this is where you do all your entertaining, I'm taking you, yeah? So you said you had a few problems with the police. Yeah. yeah Do you want to talk us through a, you know, I mean, apart from the obvious, well, uh, you know, we can see the state of the police itself. But uh, it talk was, us through it. It was all right when I first moved because I decorated it all myself. Right. Okay. But it was all right until the roof started to leak, and this what this is what happened. All this. All right. Okay. Thing. So it's dead, it, basically it's a case of um, over a period of time, it's it's just basically falling apart, really, isn't it? Yeah. I could see it's quite warm in here today. All right, in the chill of the winter. Summer, it's brilliant in the summer. Okay. Yeah, all the windows open in the summer. So tell us something. You've got a table lamp on there. Why have you got a table lamp on? Why haven't you got any other lights? Because all my electrics are blowing. So for, what what is your power source? It's all done off what off that. Off that. Doesn't mean it. Which is I, what I, an extension I lead. I did put it on the on the floor. The right. Back, okay. But it wasn't bright enough. So right. Okay. So you've raised that to uh, so to I give an idea and put it on it. What's the torches for, mate? Night time. Uh, why would you need torches at night time? You've got obviously you've got a little lamp. Yeah, there. but I don't need that on all night. Okay. Right. Okay. I've got so to have a torch under the toilet or go to the kitchen. Or really? Like. So if you get out of bed, you need to get like we all do. You need to go and have a, a leak. You, you, you reach for the torch and you take yourself to the toilet via torchlight. Mm. And how long has that been going on? Mm. Since this got blown. And she said it'd only take four weeks to do this. Four weeks? A whole lot. That's the all the electrics. Right. All the new 
points, everything. Radiators. And so all. You're obviously paying rent for this, or somebody's paying rent for it. What, what is this actually costing a month? Two hundred and forty. So it's two hundred and forty pounds for a month. Obviously, living in well, what I've seen, uh, this is without even looking around the place. And you're living by torchlight and uh, you know sockets. It's not very good, really, is it? There's um, the first thing that sort of hit me when I walked in here is the damp. Okay, it is obviously very, very damp in here and very humid. How does that affect you? Does it? Or is your chest and things like that? Does it? Uh, well, that's why I've got my pumps. I've got to take different pumps. Okay, so there's there's evidence there's so much medication and stuff around here, which obviously Skeg needs. As you can see, he's not particularly well on his feet. And um, he, he's waited for a few things to go on. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Will uh, knows more about that than I do, and he's he'd be the one who's going to speak about that now shortly. But from my point of view, just walking in, I mean, how, how the hell people want to come here and visit? I don't know. Um, to live in it would be absolutely appalling. And how long have you lived here? Sixteen. Sixteen years. I think it's time now that uh, something was done about it, and you were given a little. You know, I mean, you've suffered long enough. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I think it's about time somebody was held accountable and uh, you were given something a bit more deserving of, for what you've given. Anyway, uh, I think I've spoken enough on it, really. Will is the guy who was initially brought in. He only brought the food parcel, as he said earlier. And then um, as a result of that, it opened up a whole new can of worms. Will's going to talk now about uh, what he's actually done about it what sort of responses and, and everything else and where we intend going with all this at a later time to stay there. It's all right, mate. I'll pick that up now. So, um, Will, you have you came in with a food parcel, yeah? Take us from there, mate. Well, um, we're Richie 42 because we're a part of uh, HCW support and we do what we call a ration pack and we got told the Skeggy might be in need. So we've done a trip down and when we come in, it was like going back to the 19th century. Uh, I know Skeg says that it was only a, just over a month, but uh, I'd like to contradict that because there's no way that this damage could have happened oh, yeah. and deterioration in this building could have happened in that time. <coughs> now, since I've talked to Skeggy, I, I've turned around and said that, in my opinion, I think he should be moved out because of his chest infection and, and, the, and the conditions. And I've been to the Royal um, RCT, I was going to say Royal Court Transport, but they don't work either, so now there's RCT. And I went to the housing department, and they turned around and said there was nothing to do with them, though they paid the rent, that it was environmental health. So I've been in touch with a lady called Michelle in environmental health housing, and I took a load of, uh, well, Richie 42 took a, a load of photographs on the initial. Yeah, uh, I see them myself, yeah, they were pretty shocking. Uh, yeah. What we've done, we put them on Facebook, just to let the boys know the conditions that you're living in because in my opinion if the RSPCA came in and you had a dog they would take that dog off you straight away because yeah. there's no living conditions for an animal yeah. and nothing you can steal no, no, no. but uh, you're paying rent uh, I've been in touch with the, the, the papers the Aberdeer leader and I talked to a gentleman there named Sam he's following me tomorrow so I'll get him to come down uh, and interview you. But if, if you just take us around the house and just show some of the conditions, like uh, when we went into the bedroom or your spare room, uh, like you said, some of the floorboards are missing. So that's an hazard, especially, yeah. as you said, you using the torch. If someone did stay here for the night, which I very much doubt, and they went in there, they could end up down the shop downstairs. Now, you had up a burglary. Exactly. Yeah. I could be the same as well. Yeah, well, you could, yeah, yeah. inadvertently if you go out in the middle of the night, disorientated, yeah, especially using in. a torch. You're going to walk in one morning and there's me on the floor. Well, there's many a night I've gone to the loo and I've ended up pissing in somebody's locker, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's that was yeah. one of the things we did as soldiers. Never done that. Let's not forget that there as well. I mean, that's a hell of a step yeah. for you know for a for a, for anybody really to have to take. Um, it, well, if a, if a fire broke out, how are you, oh, you going to get out of the place anyway? You've got one route out, which is the route we've just come in. There's no other means of escape. There's no windows that you... They, they don't open, apart from the top one. There's a sheer drop down there. It doesn't really tick any any boxes, as far as anything's concerned. All of this, 
that will go up, you know, I mean, that's dry paper, that'll go up in, this place would go up like a, you know, a box of matches if you stamped on it, oh. in, next to no time. And you've got a, a wooden Everything is vanished, you know, all this stuff is, is flammable. Um, it's, the risks, well, I mean, you don't have to be an expert in anything to see what, um, the sort of risks that you face and uh, and the problems that you've obviously got to your health and uh, your well-being. So mm. show us around, give us the credits on it. And I, I, I don't try to say like you were in the regiment. This is your your design, <laughs> you know, sort of because uh, I, Bowen or whatever. So we're in Bowen wouldn't even <laughs> yeah. pick this up. But uh, <laughs> ten, it, it's like the. Um, well, you're an old regimental world man, uh, <laughs> man world, didn't you? So yeah. the old forty first. This would have probably been re reminiscent of Nelson's for again. Yeah, flagship, like, wouldn't and it? I remember it well. Yes, I did yeah. like living in that condition. All we need now is a couple of portals for the guns, the cannons, <laughs> and we'd be well away. Or the mission at Rockstrift, it could be. Yeah. On a serious note, Will, how do you find people? You know, when you go to them with the problems and you're addressing them for obviously for Skeg. He's a quiet man. He always was. Um, he's not one to make waves in any way. And he's obviously somebody to speak to. How do you find people in authority and those people who are appointed to help within the housing, um, counsellors uh, and that type of thing, how, how do you find the help that they give? Are they proactive or are they indifferent or, or what would it be in your experience? I, I've been in touch with a couple and people were standing back when they are talking until I mentioned uh, the little words and the little book that was signed which is the Armed Forces Covenant for the Rondakan and Taff. And once I mentioned that, I was given telephone numbers then to get in touch with the environmental health. But the point is, I shouldn't have to mention the covenant. Right, okay, yeah, that's a, now, absolutely. Well, that was, that was enshrined in law by the yes, government. Yes, and it was signed, and I got a copy of it, because I, 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 just in case I had to refer to it. But on the other side of it, and I'm not being racial in any way, but there's a load of immigrants coming in, uh, and they're coming into Ronda Canataf, and I can guarantee that they would not be put into a flat of this condition because it'd be low their standards. And my saying is, if they won't be put into this condition, why should a veteran from the British forces live in a condition like this when we should be looking after our own? and sorting ourselves out before others. I, I couldn't agree more. That's, 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 that's what gets me. <laughs> I think there's another point as well, is the, um, and it's worth noting, I do point it out this morning, you mentioned something about the uh, Senator right. in Aberdeer. The, 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 everybody calls it the Senator, but Aberdeer has got a great military back into it. And there is a Senator in London, and Senator basically means empty tomb. There is only two in the whole of Great Britain, and these two is in London and Aberdeer. Aberdeer. And I think the people of Aberdeer should be proud that they got the cenotaph, oh, yeah. but they should also come out and be proud of the veterans living here. A big friend of mine uh, in the regiment was killed in 1972, Tony Meek. He's buried in Aberdeer. I come over every year. Now, it's his sacrifice that people walk around. Yeah. It's your service and your sacrifice. I've let people have the freedom to do what they want. Mm. And I think it's about time that they recognised a veteran and started doing a little bit more for them yeah, instead right. of just standing yeah. back and saying, well, we'll see what we can do. It's not we we'll see what we can do, it's what we what will we do. do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, basically, all through the house, the first thing that, got, that hits you, if, I mean, if you were blind, you, you'd be, you know, you could smell it for what it is and uh, get a good picture visually, you know, in your mind. You can see that all that speaks for itself. Let's have a little look at the artex there on the ceiling. That's not so flaking. That in itself can pose a hazard, depending on when it was put up. Uh, artex in the early days uh, did have uh, certain compounds in it, which which are hazardous to your health. But there's black mold everywhere. Okay, everything in here is a hazard, uh, not just to your physical well-being. Should you trip or fall on anything, or the fire risks, but actually to your well-being, your health. Uh, as in your, your occupational health, your breathing, your respiratory uh, problems and things like that. So nothing in here is user friendly I'm afraid. If we look at the ceiling there, 
that is your route into the attic apparently why you'd need to go up there i don't know uh, that's just a board i don't know how secure that board is it does look very good uh, but i suppose if you store this stuff in the attic what you do is you get a crowbar and take it out and and uh, up you go with your boxes with all your treasured belongings we know about the light situations there's not a light bulb in here but take it from me we've checked all the lights and nothing works um, so that's the room for the well, we don't want to be accused of vandalism, so we're going to uh, be very, very gentle in what we do. Here. We're just going to move this apart slightly. Have a look at that. Right, there's all sorts of cultures and uh, and stuff going on in there. I'm going to take that. I'm, you know, I'm going to take a risk here and touch it. But you know, that's um, that's basically what we're dealing with. That's wood chip paper. That will go up. That is a great ignition source. You know, it's, if you get a short with a TV, or we know that the, the electrics is something wrong there. That's going to go up like a, you know, that's just going to go up like a fireball. Everything else has been varnished. Nothing is sort of flame retardant or anything. But, well, well look at that. There's, I don't need to really say a lot about it. Uh, we'll just, there you know, I can hold I can a bit there for you to see yourself. That's causing all sorts of hazards. The dust in itself, if it's breathed in, is going to cause you respiratory problems. Uh, and that is an area that I deal with. In my nature of work but it's the spores in the mold that can actually cause long-term damage and respiratory failure um, i know councils in most areas once that is spotted in, in places is dealt with straight away for some reason it's um, it's supposed to be left in this particular property we've got the same all over somebody's even taken to uh putting sticking plasters yeah <laughs> all right Okay, now well, they're there. Well, like Skeggy just said, they're there to stop the rain coming in. What, well, waterproof tape or gaffer tape, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is basically all the standard between him and uh, water coming in through the property, through the roof that's just leaking. The curtains, I mean, there's absolutely no point in washing anything within days. That stuff just becomes black and mouldy. The curtains and everything else. It's... Uh, it's a cesspit. It's absolutely appalling. Okay, well, the damp on the external walls, that's one thing, but this is an external wall here. Uh, and the same problem exists. Uh, the damp is in the corners, as you can see it. It's pulling all the paper away. This is Skeggy's sitting place. This is where he sits, uh, surrounded by all this, uh, watching his TV with his one little light. We're going to come on to that shortly. And... Uh, this basically is home. Uh, this is where he, he sits, he watches his little TV uh, by his sort of um, table lamp, if you like. But as you can see, the, it's not confined to damp, it's not just confined to the outer walls, it's the inner walls as well. That's the result of the roof, I would think. Uh, it's, it's obviously leaking in, in a multitude of places. What I'm going to do now is to just give you an idea of what it might be. Bear in mind, this is daylight now, we're, we're at midday, we're probably at the lightest part of the day. It's going to ask Will to, switch to, to knock the lights off and just leave the small lamp on so you can get an idea of how dark it is. This is in full daylight now uh, with, it, with the lamp on. If we turn that off, we're going to be in, almost in total darkness. Try and imagine this at night, uh, manoeuvring your way around with nothing other than a torch. That should give you some idea of the, uh, the situation now we're in. Knock it off, you won't. Okay, let's, let's just put it off. Okay, so that is, that's your light. You couldn't read by this light. You, there's, not, there's not much you could do uh, with a light that's in this room. I certainly couldn't read by it. Um, in fact, I'd have, probably have problems finding my way around as well. Bear in mind as well, we've seen how Skeggy walks. All right, he's, he's pretty much uh, knackered. His legs are, are, are playing him up. He's waiting on an operation. He's lost the use of, of fingers and things like that. So it's not conducive to uh, to his well-being. Okay. Anyway, I think that probably covers everything in this room. Will's going to guide us on now through the bedroom. Right. I'd just like to point out that these are not a part of IKEA or something that he's going to make a bookcase. These are actually part of the floor because there's a mould underneath the carpet, which again is a very dangerous hazard. 
and there's electrics under there and th th this shouldn't be there. Anybody coming in here that didn't know about that, they could end up in the hairdressers having a perm downstairs. Alright, well here's the bedroom then. Um, uh, he's got the curtains drawn, uh, doesn't matter, a choice. You can see that there's no light bulbs in there, just somebody might, some bright spark might pick that up. But uh, the reason the light bulbs have been taken out, none of them have worked. Uh, they, and they have tried other bulbs and uh, they've blown. It's not just a case of changing the light bulbs. They're actually finished. There's, it's got to be a five millimetre crack uh, along the top of the wall there where this wall meets the ceiling. Uh, is obviously, that's where the paper and things are pulling away. Again, you've got that damp smell all through the house. This is Skeggy's favourite room. It's probably the best kept room in the house. And, uh, you know, this is where he sleeps. So he's got to get out of there somehow in the night with his torch because he doesn't leave that on. So he's got his torch by his bed and then he manoeuvres his way through here, through the rest of the house to the toilet, whatever, or if he wants to make a cup of tea. Um, well, there's not really much more we can say about that, is there? Again, we see the varnish on the doors, all fire risk. None of that is fire retardant. So if a fire breaks out in there and he's in here, he's got nowhere to go. Right, so here's the bathroom. Um, bathrooms, by nature of what they are, they're always pretty damp. And you can see it's pretty evident anyway. Uh, nothing is matching. Well, not that that's a great major problem, so long as it's functional, that's all you really need. But uh, I don't know what this is here. Right, well, the black mould, as you can see it down the walls, up on the ceiling, all around. Uh, the damp is basically everywhere. The carpets are stinking with damp and mould. There's literally nothing you can do. You know, you could have, even if pipes were boxed in and things like that, to just make it easier to clean or whatever. But uh, this is the bathroom. It's quite spacious. Uh, it's a pity he didn't have as much room around the rest of the house as he's got in here. But again, we see attics on the wall. Uh, we see the paper flaking away. Um, if I look back towards the sort of door, it's 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 the same throughout. Really, there's not uh, there's not much you could say. Let's just be aware. That's two hundred and fifty pound a month. There's hardly a room in the house where you could swing a cat. So um, it's not a good use of taxpayers' money either. Really, is it? We're all paying for this, and uh, there's nobody around monitoring. Uh, making sure that people are getting value for money. Okay, it's probably all you can afford. Right, so here we are, we've got, coming into the kitchen, all this, um, he's put various rugs down, you know, to make it a little bit more comfortable underfoot. But if we look beyond the, the rugs and the, the lino that's underneath the flooring, it's all split and torn. That uh, in itself causes hazards for a guy that's not steady on his feet. Well, for anybody really, but more, even more so for somebody in skeggy state. Uh, as you see the cracks there in the lino and the way it's raised off the floor, it's, it's throughout. Uh, we don't need to go take a camera shots of everything. It's pretty evident of what it is. Over in the corner then, we've got the gas boiler. Uh, I wouldn't know what the state of play is with that. Uh, it would be worth getting a second opinion uh, from somebody that deals with gas safety, certificates of compliance and what have you, which incidentally should be renewed annually, along with things like the fire alarm, smoke detectors and that type of thing. Uh, nothing really surprises me uh, if it's not right. Again, we've got the artex everywhere. We've got paper peeling off walls, the damp, you can obviously see for yourself. And for some reason, there's a little attic there. It's the aerial. Oh, it's for the aerial, is it? That's probably acceptable, uh, although be it not very, very cosmetic. And, well hidden but if it's functional so what okay so that's the grand tour of the des race right okay well just to recap then we've been here over an hour a uh, little over an hour let's go back through uh, the initial findings well when we walked onto the property first of all skeggy has got to get up hills and god knows what else he's got to negotiate the paths and things to get to his front door that in itself is a task that's enough reason to keep you indoors, I would think. So we've got the fence there. I mean, that's obviously a problem in itself. Uh, all the chippings and things like that. Let's assume the worst. Skeggy falls ill. He's, he's fallen over. He's breaking his leg or something, moving around in the dark. We've already seen the, the sort of things that he has to endure indoors. What would happen if an ambulance had to get up here? 
it, you know, you've got a block drive that could prove a factor, whatever the case is. Certainly next door, although it's nothing to do with it, it's well worth mentioning the fact that nothing is secure there. A kid could fall in there, somebody could crawl under the fence. I'm assuming that whoever's responsible for that is also responsible for the maintenance of this building. And therefore it makes it relevant, uh, as far as I can see. I'm not a construction worker and I don't know a great deal about it. Suffice to say that something isn't right there. The inside of the property speaks for itself. Now, at this moment in time, we are talking about giving a level playing field for everybody. So we're talking about bringing refugees in. Just think, if a Syrian refugee went into the house, and they're entitled to our help and whatever we can give them. But if they were put in somewhere like that, and the press got hold of it, there would be absolute hell to pay. Or why shouldn't it be a level field, playing field? We have been to countries and seen suffering on a monumental scale, not just on news footings and things like that. You want to know what it's like to smell a rotting corpse or to see women and children crying because some of these soldiers and people who are being put on the streets and living in stuff like this have actually been there. All right? And it, it is heartbreaking. It's heart, certainly heartbreaking to see one of our own living in uh, situations. I wouldn't want a family member or anybody living in those conditions for want of uh, anything else. As far as Will's concerned, I mean, he could tell you a little bit about what he did. Uh, he's a modest man, but I would ask Will to explain. Will, what happened when you left the army? I was there at your dinel. What did you do with the money that had been saved by yourself to buy yourself a, your, your dinel present? What did you actually do with it? Well, what, what i done, I got it and I donated it to the school at Walkstrift, and it ended up um, sponsoring three Zulu children for a year in education. So all the papers, pencils, rubbers and all that was supplied. Uh, and I thought that was uh, the best thing to do. You know, I talk about the regiment, I talk about rock drift, so I put my money where my mouth was. Okay, so that's an example of what we do as soldiers. We're not, uh, nobody's asking for anything preferential. All we're asking is for a fair crack of the whip. Remember the Armed Forces Covenant. Will is gonna speak about that it, uh, on a separate issue. Uh, later on, which I'm so, hoping is something you'll all pay attention to. But there was an Armed Co uh, Forces Covenant which was signed and it's meant to be honoured by the British government and the councils and, and people within authority. It's pretty obvious that that is not being done, okay, and it needs addressing. We're going after people in authority and the people who make these decisions who think it's acceptable for that, this to happen. You can address it now and put it right. And you could also think about the, the, the hundreds of them, probably thousands of other soldiers all over the country who are suffering in similar circumstances. Remember, we have got soldiers on the streets with no home whatsoever. Okay? Let's spare a moment though, if you take nothing else away from the video, please spare a thought for those who are living in these conditions that are deserving of better. Okay? There's nothing further for me to add. Thank you. The only thing I got to say is we've said enough about the building, we've said enough about the conditions he's in. What I would like to emphasize, Skeggy is a very, very sick man. He's a very, very quiet, I would call almost call him an introvert. And if no one comes up and fights his corner, he will sit in his corner, as we've seen, which is dark, dingy squalor, and he'll be sitting there all day. He's done his time in the service. Let's hope that someone out there will take into account his service, will take into account his living conditions, <coughs> and for God's sake, get him out and put him into a place that he deserves. He is only one of many. And like Bone said, if we don't look after him, the way things are going, no one else will. So if you know of a veteran that is on the streets, you know of a veteran that needs food, please get in contact. There's organisations out there. At the end of this video, uh, 42 will put our contact details. So if you know of someone, don't sit back and say he's a bum. He's not a bum. He's a veteran in trouble. Please support him and get in contact.